following program is sponsored by PokerStars.com. Last night, a bit of irony found the big game. Your actual name is Cannon? That is my name. We have a Cannon named Cannon. And Gonzalez Cannon established a different form of communication with Scott Seaver. One yellow and one white. My guess one yellow, one white. I can do that. Tony G made life difficult for most of the table. Golly, like, you wanted me to give him a speech. I think I'm outclassed at this table. Until Daniel Negrano rivered him in the end. Did you qualify? Yes, I've qualified pretty comfortably at this point. Ah, uh, well done. I had the nuts on the turn. Tonight, see if the cannon continues to play well. <laughs> nice hand. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Or will the pros start to figure him out? Well, we could send him broke. Look at that one on the TV, too. It all happens next on The Big Game. I'm not making moves on you, gentlemen. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> Welcome to the big game from Las Vegas, Nevada with Joe Stapleton. I'm Scott Huff, where tonight some of the biggest names in poker continue to butt heads in our one of a kind poker room. And right now there's more than three quarters of a million dollars for the taking on the table. Of all the players with a picture of himself on their shirt, David Viffer Pete is the losingest. He stuck over $57,000. One of Tony G's nicknames is the Australian Airbag, but I wouldn't call him that to his face. He's got the wind at his back tonight, starting up over 20 k Scott Seaver hasn't Seaverized anyone yet this week, but he has been canonized himself. He stuck 16-1. I blame the beard. Bobby Sura is a former member of the NBA's Houston Rockets, which coincidentally seems like the only two cards he'll play. Tight Knight has him stuck 800. 32-year-old Gonzalez Cannon is this week's loose cannon. The Sacramento native is an entrepreneur who's hoping to strike it big this week in order to help out his family who took a financial hit recently. So far, he's up 18-4. The final player is Daniel Negrano. After taking down a big pot from Tony G to end last night's action, Daniel's up almost 36,000. And right now, he's with Amanda Leatherman. Daniel, what do you think of Gonzo, our loose cannon so far? You know, I was going to tell you this, but seriously, this guy has come out and like, he's been the most aggressive cannon we've ever seen before. He's really got game. No one's looked him up yet, which I'm surprised, because mm -hmm. usually cannons are timid and weak. Mm -hmm. This guy's mixing it up. He's limping, he's raising, batting, and he's talking trash and straddling. He's like the whole package. I like him. Usually you beat up on the loose cannons. Well, I'm going to try to, but he's a little tougher, for sure. And plus, I've got this murderer's row behind me of like Scott <laughs> Seaver, Tony G, Viffer. There's not, my hands are cuffed a little bit here, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, good luck. Yeah, thanks. Here's a look at the rules for the loose cannon. The loose cannon is staked $100,000 to play. He keeps all money above the initial $100,000. And the loose cannon, who's won the most money at season's end, earns a North American Poker Tour passport worth $50,000. A big change from last season is that the loose cannon can no longer come back to try to win more. We're keeping it to a strict 15 minutes of fame this season. We'll start here on hand number 30. Hey, yo, Slick. And the cannon will start with Big Slick, raises to $1,500. Jack Deuce offsuit. Bobby Serra folds. Suited one gapper for Daniel, very playable for him. Calls the 1500. He wants to play a pot in position against the amateur. Ace nine offsuit for Scott Seaver. It's a big hand there. Patience, not one of Tony G's virtues. Scott's probably loving the fact that Tony said that. And Scott's going to re-raise the 6,500. Tony folds. Scott knows the cannon can't go crazy without something huge, and in position, he can outplay the cannon after the flop. 64 more than me, huh? 5,000 more. Five than more. Than more. Oh, just 5,000. Oh, that makes five it easy. Just five. just five yellows. Just five. One. No silvers, no. I didn't use the okay. silvers. Cannon calls. As they say, you brought me. Yeah, exactly. Daniel can't help himself getting three to one. Hey, you just do what he does, right? Yeah, I was just going to do what he yeah, does. Yeah, exactly. And Daniel calls. We'll have three-way action to the flop. Feels good. Someone will be qualified. Oh, and the cannon has qualified with trips. King, King, Jack on the flop. Huge flop for the cannon. Huge draw for Daniel. Cannon checks his monster. It's a great spot for a check. Scott probably should try to rep a king. For Daniel, with that type of action and that kind of board, you can't really bet a six-high flush draw. And he checks. Now, if Scott checks here, he's basically giving up on the hand. If he does bet, he can probably gain the same information with a half pot bet than he could with a three quarters pot bet. 
And he bets a little less than half the pot, 8,200. 82. Now, if the cannon just calls here, it would keep his range pretty wide. A raise would narrow things considerably, make it easier for either one of these guys to get away from it. Gonzo with a cannonball raises to 16,700. I have to give him credit for the size of the raise. If you're going to raise, make it look bluffy. Daniel's a believer. He folds. Now back to the guy who three bet pre flop. Scott's aggression may have worked had the cannon not hit this flop so huge. And now Seaver's trying to figure out if he thinks the cannon is capable of bluffing or even semi bluffing this board. Not bloody likely. And Seaver waves the white flag. He folds. You got a bluff. You get a bonus. Nah. No bluff. No, nah, he had aces. Wow. Liar. For me? Aces, yeah. No, he didn't. Good, like, yeah, good later. You beat aces, I know. Oh, yeah. Hey, aces are destroyed. King, queen? Big king, big king, big king. I didn't want to see no ace. I didn't want to see an ace. So, as the cannon adds $22,000 in profit to his stack, here are the rules of the big game. Each table lasts exactly 150 hands. The action pre-flop is pot limit, then no limit after the flop. Blinds are $200, $400 with a $100 ante, all of which is paid by the player on the button. And every player begins with at least $100,000, but can rebuy for up to five hundred k. So you become a different kind of baller, huh? <laughs> he went from a basketballer to like high stakes cash baller. You play a lot? A couple days a week, not that often. Not that often Is at all. Is this your job? Are you like another pro? No, more like a hobby. Yeah. If it's my job, I'd be on the streets. Actually, now, I don't know if you're in a job with this game, you'd probably do all right. Yeah. My guess. No, just pointing to me there. <laughs> well, I said <laughs> us. This game. I said us. Like, I, I, yeah, I went this way. Yeah. With yeah, you'd probably, like, be a winner with us. I mean, Action on Daniel. It's not that, that's not saying much. No, no, it's not. Seaver with an ace. A lot of sports, like, great sportsmen like you can become very good poker players. I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> I'm working on it. He'll try another raise to 1,200. You're looking good today. You're looking great. Tony G's out. Most basketball players don't play really well, though. Viffer. From the ones I've seen. Yeah. Calls. So did you make more money playing basketball or playing poker? <laughs> I did okay playing basketball. <laughs> Bobby Sir made 45 milski playing basketball. Less injuries here, though. That's true. Yeah. Depends. Depends where you play. I've heard of some games, Viffer, back in the day. And we're heads up. 5-3 jack, two hearts, and Seavers flopped the nut flush draw. Man, I got robbed at a poker game before. You did? Checks. I thought you didn't play high. It was a, it was a small game. <laughs> that it was makes a very it small even game. worse. It was like a small game. Like. A small game and... Viffer checks. If, if you got robbed, it would have been worth it. Turn is the six of spades. Now Seaver has a pair to go with his flush draw. And he checks it. My guess is Seaver checks so Viffer can bat and build a pot, thereby disguising his own hand. But Viffer checks, six of clubs on the river, and now Seaver's made trips. Well, this is actually better than Scott hitting a heart. It's way less obvious. He bets 2,100. For Vifford to even think about making this call, he's got to think Scott's bluffing pretty often in this spot. And he calls. And Seaver shows a winner, and he's going to take down a small pot here. I wish the heart tour came. Scott's happy, I, I think. You ever been robbed before, Viffer? I just got robbed there. Not sure your king high hero call counts as getting robbed. Well, Joe, I think we're seeing the old Scott Seaver here on the first two hands of the night. Scott's really been trying to dictate the action pre-flop so far this week. Not only is he playing the most hands with a 53% V-pip, but he also leads the table in three betting and raising pre-flop, one in every three opportunities. Despite that small win, Scott's aggressive approach hasn't quite paid off for him yet. He's currently down 27,000. Watching that show, Hard Time, do you ever watch that show on National Geographic? I've never seen it. Such a good show where you're like, they're in prison. It's such a good show. You haven't watched it, Hard Time? Are you talking to me? Yeah, now, there's a hard time for women, because the women are hard too. They're rough. I think I would be tough. You'd be all right. But you'd be popular in prison, I think. Shut up. I'm just saying, you know, because you're such a bubbly personality. Oh. Yeah. You'd be popular in prison too, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> it's because it's just your bubbly personality. Yeah. I mean, you I'll know. tell you what, I'd Real have, bubbly. if I was in prison, I already started, I would have people on my payroll, I promise you that. I, I got a question for you. <laughs> Tony G in the straddle. How much would you pay, yes, not to go? To prison? 
every single penny that I have and every penny that I could make for the next 10 years, I would pay. For how right, long? It's a year. I wouldn't go to jail for six months. Right. I mean, I can't think of a... He would never make it. I would do fine, okay? No, you, no. Fit for raises with suited connectors. I have money and I can get raises. coffee, I can trade cigarettes, I can yeah, do all that stuff. That but you're a brat. I'm a brat. You need a lot of things. In jail, I might be quiet. I'd be like, is this vegan? <laughs> I'm just gonna let that sit. So, uh, Viffer raised. <laughs> He's Jack for the cannon. I need three vegan meals a day in prison. I'm sure the vegan meals and the highlights will really win over the cellmates. <laughs> Gonzo calls over to Sura. Couple of jacks. He should be able to play this one. Call or a re raise would be fine. Yeah, he's playing. And he calls. Look at this part. I mean, this is okay. tremendous. Daniel Foles. I hope I have a, like a qualifying hand. I didn't need much to have a qualifying hand. Seaver folds. Ace, queen of diamonds for Tony G. Certainly qualifying. Calls. I have a huge hand. But I'm, I'm forced hand. to play. <laughs> like, I have to respect Wiffa. What do you have behind you? Though? Not much. I'm winning. Oh, is that it? That's it. Four players to the flop. Six, eight, eight, and the Wiffer didn't whiff this time. Wiffer flops trippers. Tony G with the nut flush draw. He checks. Wiffer's pretty short going into this hand. Seven. 7,000. But Viffer's in a great spot since he was the preflop aggressor and he connected with this board so huge. Cannon's out. Bobby Sura could be in trouble since two jacks will be the best hand often enough on this board. Then again, he never really was known for his J's. He's singing now because he's winning. And he calls 7,000. <laughs> Tony G probably can't fold. It's pretty tough to give Viffer credit for a hand and he's unlikely to be drawing dead, though he may be concerned with what got Bobby Sura to open the purse strings. If the board weren't paired, this would probably be an auto check raise. What a hand. What do you have there? Little over 28. He's got no orange chips there. You took them all. 30, so it's like 36. Didn't you hear Stapes? It's a little over 28. Bobby Sura. What are you doing there in that hand? <laughs> quietly just calling? Good question. <laughs> I've been trying to figure it out myself. Got it like two nines. Basically. You're too good at this game. All right, I'm gonna. I'm gonna drop it. This is a big lay down. What are you doing here? I don't. I this don't think a, I can come like, in this You plan. could never imagine. But don't, don't ever tell anyone. Yeah. You're Tony holding. G has Scott fold for him. Tony G makes a pretty tight lay down. We're gonna have to pull his maniac card to the turn. Nine of hearts. <laughs> Two nines, I knew it. He killed my action. I'm all in. Vipper's all in for over 28,000. Oh, I should have re-raised before the flop. Smells like someone has jacks. You got it. Looks like someone has jacks, I think. Now, Bobby's getting less than two to one, and it's possible Viffer would do this with a draw, but he knows Bobby's been playing tighter than an Ed Hardy t-shirt. <laughs> Jack's good. If Sura does call, Viffer will almost certainly double up. I hate to see this one on TV, too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dylan, that. muck that hand. Oh, muck that. Sura makes a good lay down. In this case, tight is right. We're about to, we're gonna see it real soon anyways. Show us one card. Do you wanna see? Sure. We're gonna see I, it. Here's what I'll tell you. I'll tell you the truth. You're either way ahead or way behind. <laughs> Not way ahead. How can Jax ever be way ahead? He could be way ahead or way behind. Your verbiage. Yeah. Was definitely inaccurate. All right, I'm not very educated. Uh, English only at the table, sir. Don't go anywhere. We're just getting warmed up. Welcome back to Las Vegas. On that last hand against Viffer, Bobby Sura made a very nice laydown. And while the former NBA star is here to challenge himself, he knows this table's not going to be a layup. Well, I uh, played 11 seasons in the NBA. I was in the 1996 slam dunk contest. Also was a participant in the uh, three-point contest in 2000. Played in the rookie game also. I had a pretty good career uh, considering 11 years is a long time in the NBA. So very fortunate, very lucky to be, to be able to be in this position. 
I got into poker because I was kind of bored at home and started playing online about seven or eight years ago and then just kind of played more and more over the years and uh, obviously there's a lot of poker, a lot of card playing that goes on on the flight so that, that also was a start for me in poker. Well, no, nothing really can ever bring back the competitive nature of playing basketball at the highest level, but poker is certainly a very competitive game, and uh, you know, this opportunity to play against some of the best players in the world and kind of recreate that uh, energy level. I mean, anything you do, you want to play against the best and beat the best, just as in basketball, going against the best players in the world. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to the competition. I know those guys are, are great players out there, and this is what they do for a living. Fortunately, I don't, so we'll see how it goes. Bobby Sura has guarded Michael Jordan, so he's used to playing against the best. Also, he's a white guy that played in the NBA for 11 seasons, so he's used to being an underdog as well. More specifically, a guard, and right now, guarding his chips for dear life. <laughs> Action on Daniel. Faults. I've been fine winning or losing the bet, but now, but now I'm stuck because now I don't want to bet. Now I just can't bet either way, I feel. Seaver and Viffer betting on whether or not Viffer had Sura beat on the last hand. At three to one, either way. If you lay three to one, you could bet either oh, side. I thought I was getting three to one. How could you get three to one? Give me three to one. Let me have three to one, and I'll pick the side. Seavers raised, and Viffer folds. Cannon calls. Cannon says Jack-10 suited as his favorite hand, but I guess that's close enough. And they'll be heads up to the flop. Eight, seven, five, rainbow. Check. Cannon checks. Both the flop gut shots. Seavers ahead, and he's got the lead. Two yellows, two blacks. Scott makes it 2,200. Two yellows, two blacks it is. Excellent. You can't do it any other way. It has to be that way or it's invalid. Cannon calls. This isn't the first out of position float we've seen from the cannon. Jack of clubs on the turn. Cannon makes a pair. Seaver double gutted. Check. Cannon checks. Zero chips. Also known as checking. Deuce of diamonds on the river. Good spot for a value bet. Three yellows. Three blacks. Great. Now Seaver's got the cannon talking all weird like him. <laughs> cannon bets 3,300. I'm in a Tony G spot right here. I'm going to call the moose to the bluff. Joey's in a Tony G spot. That's a myth. I'm guessing Seaver probably can't call with ace high. No one's really been able to look up the cannon, though, and I think that's getting to them. Seaver's not going to be a hero. He lays it down, and the cannon wins another pot, this one worth over $11,000. Your money won without showdown percentage has to be pretty good. I wonder what that is. Because you, yeah, no one ever calls, and you just bet, and they always just fold. Daniel's got a big mouth, but he ain't kidding. Gonzo has already won nearly eighty thousand dollars in pots without showing down his cards, and hasn't backed down to the pros one iota. In fact, the loose cannon seems to be taking it to them instead. Post flop, at least. The pros are trying to push the cannon off hands, but Gonzo's not folding the raises pre-flop, and he's hanging around like a deer tick post-flop. Action's on Tony G. In general, he's played a lot. Two jacks, raises to 1,300. 13. Hold on a minute. Viffer, one jack, folds. Tony's got an actual hand for once. Cannon, seven, ten of spades. Wants to play it, but folds. Sura folds. So is that 13 there? 13. Negrano. Rags, he's out. Still no one's going to play. I'm going to play. King eight of clubs, he's going to play. And he calls. It's friendly. It never actually seems friendly. People say that, and then it never actually ends up friendly. Seaver and Tony to the flop. Eight, ace, nine, all diamonds. Seaver checks bottom pair. Tony quickly checks behind. Jack of hearts on the turn. Tony's hand improves to a set. Seaver checks. Tony betting out 2,000. Good time for a bet. Scott calls. What do you got there? Uh, bottom pair. I got, I got, yeah, exactly. River, the four of hearts. That looks like you. Seaver checks. Tony bets 6,000. Seaver folds. Turn the set. Not a huge pop, but a tough board to get value on. Like and I had, I had, I had a flush like draw. Jack. No, I had a flush draw. I had, like I had two jacks. One red, one, one black. That's the truth. Right now, Seaver can't handle the truth as he continues to spread chips around the table. See if he can get them back when the big game returns after this. Welcome back to the big game where the loose cannon is currently up over 40 grand and in the lounge with Amanda Leatherman. 
Gonzo, you are doing well out there. Uh, that, was, that was my game plan. Uh, you know, I'm excited and you know got a lot, you know, a lot more poker to play, but I'm keeping a level head and moving forward. We're nearly a third of the way through. Describe to me how you're feeling right now. I'm, I'm feeling good. It actually feels like you know a home game. You know, the guys, you know, the conversations the same. You know, um, the actions the same. The, the, the characters, the gameplay, everything is. I'm very familiar with this environment, so. Um, you know, I'm just excited and, and I want to keep doing well. Well, it's a pretty big home game. Good luck out there, okay? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Gonzo is well on his way as he's hoping to secure a profit that'll hold up and be good enough to claim this trophy and that NAPT passport as this season's loose cannon champion. Season one winner Bobby the Bus Ferdinand took home over 181 grand in addition to the passport, but he did not get married in the Bahamas as he excitedly vowed on last season's finale. Did you just go over there and tell her you've been robbing everybody? <laughs> like, I never have a hand. <laughs> Ace Jack for the cannon. Bet, bet, they keep folding. I'm going to keep doing it. Raises to 12. Sir and Negrano out. Are you attacking me? No, sir. Mr. I'm attacking the blind. Definitely feeling like I'm being attacked. Sir, you like being called Sir Tony G? I don't mind, but I don't really like it. <laughs> Tony comes along with 8 4 suited. It's a pretty loose defend, but he is playing against the cannon. King Queen 4. Could be a, a nasty term. Tony's qualified, he checks. Friends, sir. Tony doesn't need a nasty turn, he's hit a nasty flop. Don't bet too much. 15. Cannon bets 1,500. Oh, no, I don't even want to raise that. Right. Now we might end up playing a really big pot. Check raise from Tony to 4,000. And the cannon beats him into the pot. I don't love the insta call. Even offsuit pair outs are dirty to a straight. Ace of hearts on the turn. Cannon hits another turn. 12,000. And Tony's betting 12,000, and again, Cannon beats him into the pot. That's not, that's not positive. Did you qualify with that ace? Wow. He did qualify, but Tony's got flush outs. Five of spades on the river. And that's the I missed everything sigh. Well, he does have a pair of fours, has missed his flush. And he checks it. And the Cannon shows him the goods. He has an ace, which gets the money. Yeah, I had a lot of outs. A lot of outs. Another decent sized pot for Gonzo. <laughs> oh, yeah, you did. Turn around. Oh, yeah, draw. I was like, what? Oh, never yeah. mind. Yeah. Decent pot, but the pros have finally seen behind the curtain a bit. Yeah, you got the raisin with them. So your your percentage at showdown is also pretty good. <laughs> Batting a thousand. That was the game plan. We gotta keep keep, we gotta, gotta keep moving forward. Looks like the loose cannon's game plan was to steal the playbook. He's out ahead of all the pros, up almost 60 large. Meanwhile, Tony G could use a timeout. Once up over 70,000, he now holds a profit just under 10K. I like where Gonzo is headed as far as the passport is concerned, but with more than two thirds of the hands remaining, I wouldn't start booking my travel for the NAPT tour just yet. Have you seen what they charge for change fees? <laughs> Action will start on Daniel Negrano. No, no, no. We agreed to it. Folds. Did agree to it. Yeah, I guess Fifford doesn't lie like that, right? Seaver's out. Tony raises to 1,500. I had seven, eight of clubs. Viffer finally admitting what he had in that big hand against Bobby Sura. Couple of eights for the cannon. 1,500. Calls. Bobby Sura. 7-5 off, and kicks it in. Tony G may be seeking revenge for Cannon floating him on that last hand. These two are a coin flip if we see all five cards. You like that. Heads up to the flop, 6-10-7. Cannon has a gut shot in his pair, and he checks it. Tony checks. Deuce of clubs on the turn. Not a very scary board for two eights, especially with straight outs. Cannon bets 2,000. And Tony calls. No, no, no. Now it's Tony floating the cannon with Ace Jack. Deuce on the river. He can't make hands like the cannon. I am a fan. You got it all figured out. Betting 4,000. Got to give the cannon credit for being confident enough to attempt thinnish value on the river. And again, Gonzo's got the pro in a spot where he really can't do much. But Tony is right too. All right. I believe you somehow. Wins again. I hope you bluffed it. Choose anyone. <laughs> and Tony folds. Bottom one, bottom one. More free information. Yeah, but which eight did he show? <laughs> Starting to question who the professionals are here. But <laughs> <laughs> you can see this, you it's can see that. Look easy. Two in a row for the cannon. Kill pot. Um, well, he is literally a born cannon. <laughs> He's killing us. 
<laughs> Cannon the Cannon continues to fire shot after shot across the bow. See if the pros can eventually retaliate after this. Remember, there's behind the scenes footage, bonus hands and stats, as well as moments deemed too hot for TV on the website. After 46 hands, our loose cannon is setting a nice pace for that NAPT passport. So I guess we'll be seeing you after you win the NAPT passport. Yes. Like, seems like a lock right now. You're probably going to end up around 400,000, is my guess. That, you know what, now that would be a nice would payday. That, 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 that would be acceptable. With $400,000, you could buy a couple of houses, maybe even put a hotel on Park Place. Yeah, well, he's certainly railroading these guys as the action continues with hand number 48, and it's on Gonzo. Four deuce. Kicks it in. Sura folds. King 10 off for Daniel. I don't know what day of the week it is. Them's raisin chips, 1,200. King Jack, slightly better king for Seaver. Despite Daniel's dangerously pretty looks, Seaver's got him in jail. And just calls. Have you been watching? Tony folds up to Viffer. Wow. Yeah. I would never fold this hand, but the new and improved Daniel? Folds. The new Daniel. There's a new version. 3.0. Yeah. <laughs> just wait till I lose a pot, okay? Daniel 3.0 is crabby. Queen Jack 7 on the flop. Daniel's open ended. Seaver with a pair. Expect some action. Daniel gearing up for a semi bluff. Makes it 2,000. Seaver's definitely not folding. But he'll just call. Daniel seems nonplussed. And we'll see a turn card. Ace of Diamonds gives Daniel Broadway. Daniel 3.0 knows how to draw. Daniel also knows that this ace would typically be a good card to bluff at, so we may see a bet here. Daniel makes it 6,200. Daniel may get some action out of Seaver since he picked up some outs to a straight to go with his pair. We know Scott's almost drawing dead. In fact, he cannot win the pot outright. Seaver calls. Daniel's got to love that while he's got the nuts. To the river. Ten of diamonds, not anymore, and Seaver's been saved here. Diamonds hit, but they both have the nuts straight. Daniel checks. Daniel's checking, hoping Scott will bet at it. It's hard for Daniel to get called by a worse hand. He doesn't want to get raised with that flush coming in. Seaver bets 16,200. Daniel probably can't raise. And Daniel calls. They're going to chop it up. Everyone gets their money back. Except for Tony G and Viffer, they don't get their blinds back. <laughs> had you for a minute. Yeah. Hard to hold off Scott Seaver. I had King Jack. I'm getting at least half. Did he say King Jack or King Jack? Joe, as far as Daniel goes, he's just not mixing it up the way he usually does. Daniel 3.0 has only seen 19% of flops, which is quite low for him. But upon closer inspection, it's probably a direct result of having the three maniacs of Seaver, G, and Viffer to his left. On the other hand, while Tony G is seeing nearly half the flops, it's not paying huge dividends to this point. So through 48 hands, Daniel 3.0 is up 25K, while original Tony is up just 10,000. <laughs> Action starts on former NBA player Bobby Sura. Deuce nine, no chance he plays it, folds. Negrano's out. Seaver, seven three, folds. Tony G, Jack eight of diamonds, raises. Fuck, I might get a new card in the middle of the hand with him. Viffer in the cannon called the 1200. Tony G's in the worst shape, lie, dominated headed into the flop. 9, 10, 7, Tony G's made a straight. Tony G flops the nuts with a redraw to the super nuts, AKA straight flush. Viffer checks, cannon checks, and Tony bets out 2,000. Pretty small bet, wants a lot of action with a hand this strong. Viffer's in, cannon out. Wise fold from the cannon, Viffer also with a straight draw. Five of spades on the turn, Tony's still best. And Viffer checks. 5,000 from the G. Such a card. These two have been known to do that on the big game, but not this time, Viff. Viffer's open-ended, but at best he's drawing to a chop. Folds. And Tony's gonna drag the pot. Had a straight flush draw. <laughs> a jack of diamonds. That's unreal. A jack of diamonds. 
You can choose one. I believe you. you. Sick. Beyond sick. I'm so confused. Is sick bad or good right now? It changes like a pro wrestler. <laughs> the frustration may be getting to Tony G. See if he can finally get paid off when the big game returns after this. Welcome back to Las Vegas. Tony G is a guy who generally likes to dictate the action and get paid off handsomely based on his reputation. While that hasn't been the case so far this week, Tony feels that his style will eventually pay off in the long run. Well, there's a lot of people have egos today at a table, so I'm not, I'm not worried about that. And if I have to take a step back and, and be successful this week at, at playing a different sort of style, I'll, I'll adjust, you know. I want to finish the week at running the table and being dominant force. That's the aim. You can't do that straight away, so you have to build towards that, to really focus, play really good poker, first and foremost, and then focus getting a knife into those people once they start bleeding, opening up those wounds, and really doing a lot of damage and pain to my opponents. Opening wounds, damage, pain. Now I know why Tony G filled out his player questionnaire by cutting letters out of a magazine. <laughs> now it's time for the couch cannon hand of the night. It's where we only reveal the loose cannons cards, and you at home try to play the hand from their perspective. It's your first couch cannon, Huff. What do you say you take a crack at it? I don't want to look stupid. I'll just call the action. Just kidding. Yeah, we'll leave it to the professionals. Action's folded around to the cannon. Ace, king of hearts. I like it so far. Raises to 1,400. And he's not limping with it. Sir is out. Negrano folding the small blind. Scott Seaver takes a look. Will he get a walk here? Easiest couch cannon hand ever. Ugh. And he calls. We've seen Scott defend with a pretty wide range, so I'm not too worried. Ace, jack, four on the flop. The cannons made top pair, top kicker. Seaver checks. I really like the cannon's hand at this point. He can see bet and get some value. 2,100. That's a healthy flop bet. Seaver's reaching for chips. Well, it was a value bet, so Cannon probably does want to call. Seaver calls. He's hopefully calling with a smaller ace or a draw. Three of clubs on the turn. Okay, hopefully not a draw now. I clearly don't like the fact that clubs or a wheel came in, but I think Gonzo's got to bet this to get value out of a smaller ace and a charge if he's only got one club. And it goes check, check. Queen of hearts on the river. It's not a great river card since Broadway just came in and any other ace paint is winning now too. And now it looks like Seaver might bet. And he fires out 3,500. Now that Scott's leading out, it's possible that Gonzo's beat, but I don't think he should fold, especially since Scott is capable of doing this with a smaller ace. And Gonzo makes the call. I got an ace. Hmm? I got an ace. Cannon shows slick. No, you don't. He has an ace. Scott had ace deuce. Good ace. Ace. Have a good ace. Or as Scott would say, ace deuce. The cannon picks up the pot. You ever heard the term poning? Poning? Yeah, poning. <laughs> it's like owning, but worse. <laughs> it's like embarrassing. I mean, like, <laughs> it's like you're getting embarrassed. My it's like anyone else would be losing far more every single hand I've played. Looks like Scott Seaver may be taking issue with the term pwn, but after 52 <laughs> hands, Gonzalez Cannon, the loose cannon, is up 72,000 smackaroos. He's holding over these guys, and he literally cannot lose a hand. Action on Daniel. Fun tattoos. You can get freak on your neck. Or what do you have on your side? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Look, it depends what kind of jail, too. I tell you that. That's like a jail tat. Daniel's out. You have no idea. <laughs> He's like, Bleh. I should tell the story. It's a good story, actually. Okay. Is this the wager story? No, this is not the wager story. Okay. But this, uh, what are you talking about? this is a good story. Cannon raises. It is about a girl. A couple of fives for Sura. Calls. A girl that I love very much, beautiful girl, comes home one day with Viffer tattooed on her wrist. Flop is 386. Sura's pair is best. And she's yeah. like, baby, baby, look what I got. So, you know, beautiful girl, lover. Lived together for a year, you know, she's talking about marriage and everything else. Cannon bets 1,400. I'm like, no, baby, I'm not ready for marriage, you know, everything else. Not ready. When are you going to be ready? 1,400. I know Sir is tight, but he can't fold here for one bet. He doesn't. He calls. So she says, well, can we at least get matching tattoos or something? Uh-huh. 
<laughs> so I thought about it. You got your own name on your neck because of her? It matches. To the turn, six of spades. It's matching. You didn't get her name? She I think she meant matching, matching tattoos. tattoos. Got him. Got him. That's just a classic oh got him right there. I bet the waitress story is better. Cannon checks. Cannon slowed down, so if Bobby liked his hand on the flop, he should still like it now. Bobby reaching for chips. 2,000 bucks. There, Daniel. I want to see. Good bet. Put you on the six anyway. Cannon folds. You must, you must, she must have loved you. She still does. Oh, she's I still hope. with you? Yeah. Oh, okay, nice. Well, I hope. Maybe she's got not. Viffer right here. You have a girlfriend? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Unintentional burn. And the needles are flying. And she wanted you to get your name on yourself instead of her name? <laughs> well, oh, that was debatable. Been a little more clear. <laughs> What's her name? Alyssa. Alyssa, that would have looked good on you. Yeah, but. Uh, but Victor looks a little better. Uh, you know, like. <laughs> All things considered, I think you made it right. And then she goes, baby, baby, what happens if we ever break up? I say, that's your dog's name, you tell people. <laughs> if you break up, you'll be lucky if she only compares you to a dog. Seaver folds, Tony G, who raises. Viffer calls. Cannon's out, Sura's out. Now we can switch cards. See, now I got position, we can go for the switches. Viffer and Tony always trying to switch. Uh-oh, <laughs> no talking. And no switching. <laughs> Eight queen jack on the flop. Tony's made two pair, but Viffer's made a bigger two pair. This exact thing happened last night, only Viffer was the one on the business end. Wow. Insta. Tony bets and Viffer insta calls. Oh, eight on the turn and Tony's filled up. Tony G makes his date with an eight. 7,000 from Tony. Viffer's smile may have faded a bit, but he probably still likes his hand. And he's in trouble. He makes the call. Viffer's going to need to hit a queen or a jack. But it's a 10 of hearts on the river. What have you got? 30, 40. And Tony wants it all. 25. It's a 25,000. This bet is meant to induce Viffer to just stick it all in, and I think that would be a bigger possibility if it weren't for this board texture. There's a four card straight out there, trips, Broadway. Top two pair is basically a bluff catcher. No worse hand is ever value betting. And the only draw that missed is spades. Still a tough spot for Viffer here. He is up against Tony G. You got there. Two pair. Not eight. Not eight. I have two pair eight. Yeah, I hope it's not slow rolling me. Right. Tony's trying everything he can to trick Viffer into calling. And he lets it go. Pretty solid fold from the Viffer. Good for the game, showing a bluff. So Tony G drags another pot, but not as big as he expected. Showing bluff is good for the game. Just saying. Tony flopped it. <laughs> he flopped it and turned it. Happy to pick it up. After that hand, I'm thinking Viffer won't be getting Tony's name tattooed on his neck anytime soon. The big game continues after this. I'm feeling great. Um, things are moving along. I'm executing my game plan. So I'm, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling real good. Predictions? Um, I walk away a big winner. That's my prediction. <laughs> Welcome back as a very confident Gonzalez Cannon now sits on a healthy profit of nearly $70,000. Gonzo only has 150 hands to execute his plan as this season the loose cannon does not have the option to return to try to win more. And the action's on Viffer. He'd like to win a little. He folds. Queen four of diamonds for the cannon. Calls 400. When you're on fire and can't lose, limping with hands like this suddenly seems like a great idea. Action folds to Scott Seaver. King six suited. <laughs> I saw it. And he called. 18 more. Tony's got them both dominated. And raises to 2200. Cannon's got to decide if he wants to light $400 on fire or $2,200 on fire. <laughs> He goes with 400. Not there, not that time. 
Scott's call would be pretty loose out of position, but he knows Tony doesn't really have to have much to attempt to squeeze here. And he calls. This Scott knows. He wants to be invited back. <laughs> Forced to see the flop. <laughs> flop is a 6 3, a couple of spades. Seaver way ahead now. Checks. He may not know he's ahead. 5,000. Tony's bet 5,000. Pot size C bet from Tony. Now, generally, once you call a three bet and hit a pair, some would say you have to call the flop. Not this time. Seaver dumps it. Scott Seaver folded the best hand. He had Tony reverse dominated. Tony just blew Seaver off the hand there, which is not surprising since he's been the most aggressive player post-flop so far this week. Taking a look at the current aggression factor calculations, Tony G is at a whopping 14.0. That continuation bet got it done for the G against Seaver, who surprisingly ranks second to last at 1.2. The less surprising when you realize he's on the right of a guy whose aggro factor is 14. Now perhaps that poning Daniel referred to earlier has affected Seaver's play a bit. And the action's on Daniel. Queen 10, and he folds. Seaver, 9-7, out. Rags for Tony. No such thing in G-land. Raises to 1,500. Action back on Gonzalez, cannon. King Jack offsuit. The general rule is to three better fold when you're out of position. He's going to call. Well, the cannon's been doing just fine so far. What do I know? Sarah folds, heads up to the flop. Me and Tony G. Just the two of us. <laughs> Seven, do six on the flop. Cannon misses, but has the best hand with King High. Tony with a gut shot. Cannon checks. Tony's got a gut shot to a six card straight, and we know his pairs are live. It's worth 3,000 to him and to the cannon. Cannon floats out of position more than trying to jump onto a wakeboard in the ocean. Nine of clubs on the turn. The cannon somehow still best and bets 3,000. Now the cannon donks the turn, and he just so happens to do it on a hand where Tony has four high and the nut low. Tony bolts. Wins every hand. The cannon's play is unorthodox, but it's gutsy and it's working. Should have raised it. Can't believe Tony lacked the heart there to put the man to the test. Yeah. For all of his money. What happened to Tony G? I'm surprised. He just came out betting there, swinging. So the loose cannon continues to keep the rest of the table off balance as he finds himself with a profit of more than $72,000 after 62 hands. Gonzo is joined by Kid Poker and Tony G on the plus side of the ledger, while Seaver and Viffer continue their struggles. These pros still don't seem to have a read on Gonzo as he's baffled them up to this point, but if season one is any indication, it may be just a matter of time before the pros catch on to the loose cannon's game. All right, guys, that's it, Gonzo. Yes, ma'am. Two shows down. Looks like you're the king of this table, huh? That's, that's how it's looking so far. We, you know, we're going to keep it going, keep it moving. Have you started thinking about how you're going to spend your money yet? Uh, I, don't, I haven't done that oh, yet. Whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, I don't, come on now. Yeah. Don't put the curse on him. Where's Scott Seaver? Is he not playing? I have playing? no idea. He's trying, but not I trying that well. I, I, I heard him and Biffer went to go get lunch. Yeah. Mm, looks like it. All right, guys, that's it for tonight. I'm Amanda Leatherman saying goodbye for now. And remember, if you've got the cash and the guts, there's always a seat open at the big game. Good night, everybody. For Stapes, this is Huff saying, ship it. When are we going to see the loose Scott Seaver? I mean, I've played every hand. I've just lost them all. What's harder, this game or defending Michael Jordan? Defending Michael Jordan much harder. Yeah. What about now? They got me stuck right now, though. You'll come back. We'll see. We'll yeah. see. It's like three years without getting paid by sitting on the bench and watching the game from home. That's basically what I do. Yeah. <laughs> we had the same job. <laughs>